Afra Jiao Wang hosts the Chinese language podcast, Loud Murmurs. She focuses on American pop culture and social changes in the United States and China. She's joining us now from Mountain View, California. Uh, let me get your thoughts on the story just now. Uh, Wu saying that he's turning the entire village into a canvas. Pretty cool. Hi. I'm uh, really glad to join. I, I want to get your take on this concept of a graffiti village. Uh, yeah, this concept is definitely cool, and uh, it's 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 really it's really hard to really compare the Western graffiti culture with the Chinese one, especially uh, in Chinese big cities. You know, Western graffiti culture is often associated with this kind of subculture or anti-mainstream uh, culture, but in China, a lot of graffiti cultures are associated with you know international or you know younger generations' uh, popular culture. And the China's street art, especially, you know, uh, with the popularity, the growing popularity of hip hop, China Chinese people are more and more open to this kind of graffiti culture. And often, the Chinese graffiti culture has a lot of, you know, this unique Chinese char uh, characteristics, such as the all kinds of unique Chinese fonts, uh, historical figures, uh, Chinese mythological uh, figures like animals, like dragons and uh, tigers, are showing in a lot of uh, graffiti. Uh, sites if you can if you can find in, in China you know it's interesting here in the United States uh, graffiti at one time you know I think a lot of people looked at it as young people and a, a form of vandalism that sort of thing but street art is has, has really gained in popularity I imagine it's something new in China how do you think it's going to be regarded and is this something that's going to flourish and take off do you think yeah, this is definitely new for a lot of ordinary Chinese people, but you know, for uh, a lot of younger generations who are growing up with with two packs of you know American street culture of this this great cultural influence in the West, a lot of young people are really open to that. For example, there's a lot of Chinese TV shows about hip hop. There is this, uh, uh, you know, rap of China. There is a street dance of China. There is even uh, a TV program about uh, skateboarding. Uh, so you know, people will be like wondering, oh, you know, when's our next TV program about street graffiti? Maybe it's such a great topic for you know TV producers to to do, to do something new. So you know, this is seen as a really you know popular youth culture rather than what we you know usually perceive as this anti-mainstream like anti-government culture, which you know, really associate with marginal people, but in China, this is really different. People who like graffiti arts are more likely to be, you know, uh, well-off Chinese uh, young people who are having a lot of international exposure. And so Wu, that's really different. Yeah, Wu's doing this in in uh, the Taiwan region. Uh, is this something that you're finding in a lot of different spots in China? I mean, a sense of of as a trend. What are, what are we looking at? Yeah, so if you go to the famous art district, uh, 798 uh, dis art district in Beijing, if you go to Shanghai uh, M50 art district, you can find this entire town or entire region uh, full of, you know, this beautiful, gorgeous graffiti arts that uh, full of, you know, made by Chinese famous, some, some of them are famous Chinese artists and some of them are unknown aspiring young artists who want to make a living by painting graffiti arts. So, and, and even in like uh, some uh, second tier cities such as Chengdu, they have a, a very, very vibrant and strong, uh, you know, this straight artist groups. So, you know, in a lot of cities in China, you can find these things. I mean, the most concern uh, with, the, with the growing uh, influence of graffiti arts is not directly from the government. Interesting is from what I think is the over commercialization because uh, more and more brands, more and more sports brands are uh, embracing this graffiti culture and the, making the artist to, to do this, you know, grand opening of some store or you know, do this street commercial, uh, street, uh, street art for those brands. So my concern is uh, the, the decline of the independence, the decline of this independent art spirit in those art districts in China, in Beijing and Shanghai and Chengdu. Uh, so I, I really wish I could see a, a very healthy balance between uh, the commercialization uh, and the development of Chinese graffiti art. Yeah, that's fascinating. Afra, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.